Welcome to worship for January 17th, 2021. My name is John Hagman, pastor at First Presbyterian Church here in Morganton, North Carolina. Sometimes after Christmas, we tend to leave Jesus in the manger. But the Gospels show us Jesus teaching and showing God's presence, the arrival of God's kingdom in the midst of humanity. But many people didn't recognize who Jesus was and what Jesus was all about. Our sermon series will explore the same question asked by the Gospel writers. Who is Jesus? Today, we see Jesus calling disciples and get another clue as to who Jesus is. We will also be ordaining and installing elders and deacons to service in the church this morning in our special Zoom service. Church, let's be gathered into worship. Almighty and eternal God, by your grace, you have called us to this time and place to be your servant people. As we follow our servant Lord, Make your Holy Spirit move within us and among us, that together we may live a new life in the crucified and risen Christ. Bind us together in faith, so that as we receive all spiritual gifts needed to fulfill our calling, we may support one another in common ministry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, at this time, we're called into a time of confession. Even when we were dead through our sin, our merciful and loving God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up through him. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Church, let us pray. Merciful and loving God, you have called us to be your people and claimed us for Jesus Christ. We confess that we have not lived up to our calling to proclaim the good news in word and deed. We are quick to speak when we ought to listen and remain silent when it is time to speak. We put too much faith in our own actions and fail to trust the strength of the Spirit. O oh God, forgive our foolish and sinful ways. Strengthen us anew to follow Christ's way in the world. By your Holy Spirit, give us the grace we need to be faithful disciples and fulfill our common calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God, hear now the prayers that we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your doing, it's a gift of God. Because of Christ Jesus, I can declare to you with full confidence that your sins and mine have been forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Last week in the Gospel of Mark, we saw a dramatic scene at the Jordan River when a voice from heaven declared who Jesus was, God's Son in whom God was well pleased. In John's Gospel, Jesus has been described in a cosmic sense as the Word of God that was God and was with God since the beginning. This Word took on human flesh and blood and moved right into the neighborhood. God in the flesh, Jesus, begins his ministry by calling disciples to follow him. Jesus invites Andrew and Simon Peter to come and see who Jesus is and what Jesus is all about. Our passage picks up on the next day after the calling of these two. Hear God's word from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses, the law, and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we learn that Philip recognizes Jesus as the one Moses and the prophets had talked about. In response, Nathaniel makes a quip about Jesus' hometown. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, scholars estimate a population of only 200 to 500 at the time of Jesus. Nazareth was agricultural, producing wine and olive oil. The slopes of Nazareth supported wheat and barley crops. The southern soil allowed for vegetable growth. The village was likely self-sufficient, but probably pretty poor. Nazareth was likely known at a local level, but not so much outside of it. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel had reason to doubt, but Jesus defies expectations. Scripture tells us that Jesus sees Nathaniel under the fig tree and somehow knows him. Seeing is a big point of emphasis for John throughout the gospel. So Jesus seeing Nathaniel tells us that something is up. Nathaniel confesses who he thinks Jesus is, the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus replies saying, if you think that's cool, you ain't seen nothing yet. That's, that's my translation. Jesus tells Nathanael, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. But in the original language, you in verse 50 is singular, and the second you in verse 51 is plural. Jesus says, truly I tell you, Nathanael, that you, y'all, will see the heavens open. Nathanael actually sees Christ crucified and resurrected, but Jesus promises this coming vision to all his disciples like you and me, that we will see greater things. John helps us see that revelation almost always comes in steps. Nathaniel started out a bit skeptical, but soon he completely changes his mind. Recognition and confession do not require full understanding. Many think that discipleship starts when someone believes. Respectfully, I disagree. When I read the Gospels, I see Jesus pursuing people and inviting them to come and see long before they believe. Most of the first disciples didn't recognize who Jesus was until much, much later. They didn't understand his teachings or his miracles. They get confused and they get it wrong. Their lives are slowly changed and progressively transformed as they continue to engage and connect with Jesus, even before they declare their belief in him as the Son of God. Friends, our lives and our churches should be filled with people who are being invited to see who Jesus is. We should be inviting others to witness the love of God through our example, our words, and our deeds. The good news of the gospel best travels over relational bridges. 
Sarah Henrik says that John 1, 43 through 51 highlights engaging Jesus straightforwardly, seeking understanding in scripture, being part of a group whose mutual witness empowers everyone, and accepting a life of incremental epiphanies. Discipleship begins with an invitation. As we read the scriptures, ask questions of each other, and participate in a community of faith, we test what God says. Trust in God and trust in each other is developed over time, which leads us to connect more deeply in our relationship with Jesus and with each other. We bear witness to what we've seen, and we share the story of what Jesus has done in our lives, and it flows out of us and continues its outward impulse from there. So who do you see today? Who might be at a distance, but God is leading you to see with more clarity? With whom might you share the story of what Jesus means to you? Sure, they might be skeptical, and that's okay. It's a process. Friend, may your life shine so brightly that Jesus is undeniable. May you see greater things because of who Jesus is. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
remember the words of the Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Church, let us pray. God of all grace, look favorably upon your children today. Bless the gifts that we offer to you. Multiply them and use them to declare your close at hand kingdom in our community and in our world. Bless those who give and bless those who receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We approach God in prayer, not as strangers, but as beloved children, baptized in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, as you are well pleased with Christ, help us to live in a way that will be pleasing to you. As you have called us to listen to Christ, help us to always heed his word and seek his will. We pray for those who are struggling today, for those who are weak and weary, for those who mourn, for those with failing health and broken relationships, for our community country and our world. Would you mend and restore us today? Grant your healing presence, your wholeness and peace, and your untamable grace to us this day. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good and return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. May the love of God and the abiding grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen.